Hey, everybody. Thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi, where you get the latest DeFi news and crypto news. Also, video deep dives. My name is Matthew. Let's jump right into it. A couple quick uh, articles today. Really liked these. This one in from Bitcoin.com. RR Squared Capital expands portfolio with strategic investment in DAG-based DeFi platform Aleph Zero. Yeah, so this is the first time I've heard about Aleph Zero, and I started doing a little digging. The project looks really cool, uh, and I quote, Aleph Zero is a privacy-focused DAG-based layer one protocol designed to provide a solution to the blockchain trilemma. A protocol level issue with blockchain, with blockchain technology that forces blockchain-based protocols to trade off between decentralization, scalability, and security. Yeah, that trade off is the issue uh, with with a with a traditional blockchain. More decentralized, less scalable. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's one of the problems. So by utilizing DAG as an intermediate data structure, Aleph Zero managed to achieve instant transaction finality, yet still produce blockchain as a result. Yeah, I invest in a couple other DAG projects. Um, DAG stands for Directed Acrylic Graph, so it's a different technology than a blockchain. Uh, supposedly still just as decentralized. I guess the way a left zero uses it is they they combine they combine they combine proof of stake technology with a DAG. I hold HBAR, which is a project I'm excited about, which is also a, a DAG data structure project. Um, and I think it's going to do really well. And so this looks really cool because we are definitely interested in not only low f fees, high scalability, but uh, privacy focused. I think that sounds really cool. It has a number of benefits. Uh, let's dig in more. Quote, and I quote, powered by a novel consensus protocol presented at the Advances in Financial Technology Conference of 2019, Aleph Zero upgrades current decentralized ledger technology to provide near zero fees, love that, privacy, love that, and the potential for infinite scalability, love that, as well as true decentralization. That all sounds amazing. Aleph Zero, te Aleph Zero team's mission is to enable access to world-class decentralized infrastructure by bringing transparency and privacy to individuals and institutions whenever they seek to direct to directly exchange value with one another. And it looks like they're in phase three of their current roadmap. I dug into the website. Um, looks really good. I'd love to uh, be able to connect and start um, deploying a little capital as soon as possible. Uh, I, I'm excited about this. I don't think that that's live. The main net is live, but I don't, I don't know if the DEX is live yet. Common. Common is the first product we're building on top of Aleph Zero. It is a decentralized exchange and a decentralized dark pool. Yeah, so that's where the privacy comes in, the decentralized dark pool. Yeah, so those of you who don't know what a dark pool is, I actually had to dig in a little more myself. Um, I, I've heard of dark pools in traditional finance, but they're mostly accessible to giant institutions, you know. If you're not a, if you don't have a million dollar net worth, uh, you don't get access to that stuff. I don't think, uh, not in trade, not in centralized finance or traditional finance, but, uh, decentralized here's, I, I found this a couple definitions on Investopedia, Investopedia. These, uh, definitions seem pretty straightforward and better than I can explain. Um, Decentralized dark pool trading platforms are trading venues for anonymously trading cryptocurrencies. Exchanges such as Kraken had offered dark pools for crypto trading. Singapore's Singapore-based Republic Protocol launched the first decentralized platform for dark pool trading in 2018. Um, uh, basically, one of the things that the dark pool decentralized dark pool trading helps protect against is um, slippage. I like that transactions can be anonymous. Um, 
The advantages of dark pool trading within cryptocurrency markets is that transactions are anonymous and decentralized. This means the exchange occurs directly between two parties, is anonymous in nature, and is not facilitated by a third party. Not only is the identity of the traders conducting the transaction not revealed, critical information relating to the trade, such as price and volume at certain positions, is not divulged. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I can see a lot of value in that. So that's one of the things that, uh, that's one of the value propositions provided by Left Zero on their decks. Uh, looking forward to when that comes out. Private smart contracts, that could be really good. Um, I like that they are file storage. They're using IPFS. So now we're starting to talk about a decentralized uh, technical architecture under the hood as well in terms of things that are normally centralized. For example, um, you know, normally with Web2 websites, your the internet files were being served, like what we're looking at right here. The images and the cascading style sheets and any PDF files are coming from normally coming from cloud services like S3 on AWS or some other centralized hosting service that can be shut down. Here, they're using IPFS, which is a um, decentralized hosting service for files, kind of like a decentralized AWS 3. Um, now, if they can get the application level stuff on something like Flux or uh, decentralized cloud compute, that sounds powerful, especially if they uh, are, I think one of the things this company is offering is decentralized DNS. So that's amazing. If you're talking about, you know, decentralized domain name DNS, uh, that can't be, ha doesn't have a single point of control. And then you're talking about your, your files being served on IPFS and you're talking about your, hopefully they didn't mention this, but if you're talking about your actual application being served on decentralized cloud compute, you know, throw in decentralized Wi-Fi through something like Helium or whatever's going to take over that space. And you really have something that's like unstoppable decentralized finance. Um, I wonder where, I think they're based in Portugal. So if you know, you're, you're in a part of the world where, you know, the government doesn't want you to earn some yield. Um, you know, maybe here's a way some people will do it. You can go to a service like, uh, a left zero or others. And, um, I don't think they can be shut down. I'm not sure how that would work. Anyway, project looks really good. And I dug into the team. Here's another thing I like about Aleph Zero is we have a transparent team. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of, I go back and forth on anonymous teams. I don't always disapprove of that. Uh, but here is like, you know, I love this. So we got, here's the, here's the president, Matthew, uh, Nymerg, PhD, looks like he has, um, you know, quite a, quite a lot of experience and he is a PhD in mathematics in the area of numerical algebraic geometry. Co-founder of Aleph Zero since July 2018. He was also a strategic advisor at Mintrist from October 20. Uh, he was a CEO at Cardinal Cryptography back in 2019. Uh, so yeah, looks like he's got his PhD from Colorado State University. So that looks fantastic. And then we have here the CTO, Adam, uh, is it Gaggle or Goggle? Sorry, Adam, if I'm pronouncing your, mispronouncing your name. Uh, Adam looks like he has quite a bit of, it, bit of experience as well. He was also, uh, before becoming a co-founder at Aleph, looks like, Looks like they started at the same time. They're both, yeah, co-founders. Uh, he was also at Mintrist Finance. So it looks like these two have a harmonious relationship from past projects as well because they're still working together. So that's always a good sign. Um, and he was a senior data scientist. All right, Adam, very cool. That sounds fantastic for a project like this. And then we have another one. We have uh, Anthony Zolciak, co-founder at Left Zero. And he's been here since, yeah, co-founder. So since the beginning, he was the CMO 
of Cardinal Cryptography from 2019 on. Uh, yeah, looks like uh, a lot of crypto experience there as well. So I really love to see the transparent team putting it out there. You can kind of look at their experience. Um, you know, some people say, well, anyone can create a LinkedIn profile, but you know, anyone can, but you can't, it gets to a point where you can't create a LinkedIn profile that has mutual connections. That's okay. So right here, I have a mutual connection with Matthew. Um, that's where it starts to get like, okay, this is probably more legit. Some of the other, um, teams I've researched when I've done deep dives and I have more coming up this week, I promise, you know, I'll see seven or eight mutual connections on my LinkedIn profile. And then I'll look at those mutual connections and I'll see, oh yeah, we both worked with Robert or we worked with this person or we were that person. So that's where it's like, you cannot create a fake LinkedIn profile like that. You know, there, there's only six degrees of separation. So, um, I do think there is some value in transparency um, cause there's been a lot of uh, proponents of anonymous teams in crypto and I don't, I'm not always against it. Like I said, anyway, uh, I looked at the coin and it looks like it just launched here back on the, Oh, like right at the beginning of February. So yeah, it's trading around dollar 38 right now. Definitely interested to see what happens with this coin. Okay. And then this one in from CNBC, um, this is pretty big news. You may have heard already. Peter Thiel backed crypto startup BlockFi to pay $100 million in settlement with SEC and 32 states. BlockFi has agreed to pay $100 million to the SEC and 32 states to settle charges related to its crypto lending product. The service... BlockFi interest accounts lets users accrue interest on holdings of Bitcoin and other crypto. BlockFi says it's now applying to register with the SEC to offer a new crypto savings product called BlockFi Yield. Yeah, that's just, that's just sad. Um, you create a product, you're just, I think, I think you were getting like 9% interest. Um, and BlockFi is, is not decentralized finance. That's CFI, centralized finance. Um, which we can see clear example of right here because they are being sued by the SEC or they have to pay a fine. If they don't, the SEC will shut them down. They will make them go under. Um, and if you now, I believe if you're in the U S this product is no longer available to you. Yeah, here we go. BlockFi advertises APYs as high as 9.25 on its website. Ooh, <laughs> Much higher than the average savings rate on offer from incumbent financial institutions. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's what's really happening here, in my opinion. It's, uh, you know, when you can get 9.25 on BlockFi versus, um, you know, 2% on a treasury note or 0 .0 something percent in a bank, uh, you know, the... The SEC probably doesn't want that. Although they're saying they're protecting us, but that they this is... Yeah, this type of competition uh, is trying to be destroyed. And in centralized finance, it's not too hard to destroy. I bet their new product, if it does get approved, will offer interest rates probably around maybe 3 or 4%. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. So that's sad for BlockFi. Um, you know, luckily, we have decentralized finance now. I mean, instead of earning... 9.25% on your stable coins on BlockFi, you can earn, you can earn almost 20% on decentralized protocols like Anchor. Um, and they're, <clears throat> they're not based in the United States. I think Block, yeah, BlockFi is. So they're not even in the SEC's jurisdiction. Um, and f whatever jurisdiction Anchor belongs to, uh, I don't know if it's Singapore or Korea. I forgot where. But if someone tries to shut them down, <clears throat> the only thing that can be really shut down is the public-facing website that interacts with the smart contract. The smart contract is where you're actually doing 
the staking of your stable coin and receiving almost 20%. Um, so if that got shut down, if the public facing website got shut down, you still have other ways you can access it. You can use uh, Anchor, I believe has a command line interface. You can learn how to interact with the smart contract directly, which is on a decentralized blockchain, which we know can't be shut down. Um, just like Bitcoin can't be shut down. So uh, I, I guess it gives those who are a little more adventurous uh, other options if they want to earn yield on their crypto. So yeah, that's that's something that's possible. You know what's that? What's that commercial about? Uh, Crypto.com fortune. Fortune favors the brave. All right. Uh, um, the caffeine's kicking in. I'm starting to. Starting to, uh, I can see myself go, getting into dad jokes pretty soon from here. So I'm going to sign off. Uh, as always, this is not financial advice, and I'm not a financial advisor. I am just some guy here on the Internet creating content, hopefully adding value to you. And I will have uh, deep dives coming this week, I promise. Uh, thank you to all the recent subscribers. I really appreciate you signing up, and I promise to... Keep doing my best to add value, and I will talk to you soon.